Welcome everyone on this uh, webinar on uh, simplifying your infrastructure with Synology Virtual Machine Manager. Now I'm James Blake, I'm a product manager here at Synology UK and uh, my main focus uh, is actually on, uh, on backup but also virtualization as well. So obviously as I said we'll, uh, we'll do, a uh, do best to um, yeah, answer all of your questions um, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, showcase some really cool features that uh, that we've got. So what's kind of, yeah, what, what we've got coming up on, uh, on today's webinar? So first off, we're going to take a look at uh, virtualized infrastructure and we'll kind of what exactly is virtualized uh, infrastructure. We'll then take a bit of a look at uh, how Synology can uh, assist with that. And um, and then yeah, we'll kind of go through some uh, some really cool kind of uh, use cases of uh, a virtual machine manager to showcase how you can utilize it in uh, in your own infrastructures. So I guess first off, if we kind of take a look at uh, business infrastructure in general, well, what is it kind of made up of? Well, there's obviously a number of different things. You might have file servers, mail servers, printer servers. Basically, a lot of servers, uh, including uh, one of my best favorites, uh, backup servers and uh, surveillance servers as well. Now, of course, you can kind of have all of these different systems running uh, on individual systems. And you might you know, have a rack in the corner of your office or in a uh, server room um, in uh, somewhere in your building. And it might look, as you see on there on screen now, so you've got lots of different systems all, uh, all stacked on top of each other, all doing their own roles. Now, this can actually be quite difficult to manage because obviously you've got a number of different systems. They might all have different uh, warranty terms, all have different support terms with, uh, with each of those different systems. And so if we want to kind of help simplify it and maybe save some money as well, we can look to kind of consolidate, consolidate all of those into a, a single system. Now, of course, to uh, make that system work uh, for us, we might need to have a slightly bigger, slightly more powerful system. But then we can spin up each of those different tasks virtually uh, on top of that system. So it means that, yeah, as I say, we can uh, help simplify management, simplify uh, yeah, controlling of all of those solutions and keep everything nice together all in one place. Now, actually, a, a really kind of cool report that was done uh, a couple of a couple of months ago was um, was this one where they actually discovered that, yeah, the, um, the the virtualized infrastructure or the virtual machine market rather um, is actually expected to hit nearly $4.5 billion in, uh, in 2028. Um, and actually in 2022, it was already over $3.6 billion as well. So it's an absolutely huge market and uh, obviously is uh, a very kind of key critical part of, uh, of, of your data or sorry, of your office infrastructure. Now, again, of course, these are all big names that you would have heard of before. So obviously we had uh, VMware, we had Hyper-V, we had uh, OpenStack as well. And again, well, kind of how can Synology kind of fit in with that? Well, obviously, we, uh, we would always like to be the, uh, the storage behind all of those solutions. So maybe using iSCSI, Fiber Channel, NFS, storage behind all of those virtualization solutions. But actually, that's not really what we're going to focus on today. No, today we're going to take more of a look into uh, yeah, Virtual Machine Manager. Uh, oh, excuse me. Now, Virtual Machine Manager is a package just like any of the other systems on the NAS. What we can do is under Package Center, we can scroll down to Virtual Machine Manager and we can select Install. Now, this is going to, just like the Active Backup Suite, just like Surveillance uh, Station, this is going to install as a software on our NAS. And it's just going to do that now for us. There we go. And uh, if we go into the app drawer, we can then find the Synology Virtual Machine Manager. Now, a very, very simple bit of uh, setup that we need to do is just choose which volumes that we want to uh, have this uh, be able to utilize on our system. And it's as simple as that. So it's exactly that simple on how to get Virtual Machine Manager running on, uh, on your systems. Now, one thing to note is uh, it does have to be uh, a plus series system or greater to be able to utilize um, uh, yeah, Virtual Machine Manager. But obviously, those are the systems we'd always recommend for a small to medium business or larger anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's uh, not to, yeah, they, they go hand in hand quite, uh, quite nicely. So I guess, yeah, let's, we've taken a bit of a look at uh, how we can um, yeah, you, uh, install the package on the NAS, but how do we actually kind of go about, well, yeah, utilizing it? So obviously we can, uh, first off, we'll take a bit of a look at uh, how we can create virtual machines on the uh, on the NAS. 
And then we'll take a bit more of a look at how we can actually import VM. So obviously you might have a different solution. How can we kind of migrate onto, uh, onto Virtual Machine Manager? So actually, yeah, let's, let's, before we kind of do that, you want to create a new, uh, new virtual machine. Let's take a bit of a look uh, further into that. So again, here we are on uh, Virtual Machine Manager. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, select Create. Now, what we'll do uh, is to say, yeah, click Create. And here we're going to create a virtual DSM. Now, reasons behind this will uh, become apparent a bit later. But um, yeah, we're just going to give it a name here. So we'll call it Virtual Storage. And we'll give it some, uh, some compute power and also some RAM as well. And then we'll give it a, uh, a bit of uh, storage on our system as well. So just a nice, simple uh, 100 gigabytes. And uh, once we're happy with all of that, we'll just allow it to my uh, account. And we'll also select Power on Virtual Machine after creation, just to help simplify, um, uh, yeah, one less button to click. Now, for a VDSM, you do have to use a, a license. But again, all systems come with, uh, with one free license uh, as a, 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 from factory. So we can utilize that here. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to install uh, the Synology OS, Synology DS Disk Station Manager, onto, uh, onto Virtual Machine Manager there for us. And again, I'm sure you've all kind of seen this before. So we're just kind of skipping through this because you don't need to see how to uh, install DSM. That's a, that's a nice straightforward kind of task. So what this is doing is it's just uh, creating for us. And uh, once we're happy with all of the settings, there we go. So now it's all fully booted into uh, a uh, unique uh, OS that we can then either share out to uh, discrete uh, customers. Maybe as an MSP, you might want to virtually host uh, operating systems for, for your customers. Um, or maybe you might have a, an organization that's kind of broken down into lots of, uh, lots of kind of different segments and they each need to have unique access to, uh, to their own data and to keep everything nice and simple. This is a, a really kind of good, uh, good way to, uh, to do that. But again, there's actually something even more kind of cool that, uh, I will come on to in a, uh, in a little bit. So obviously, yeah, that was how we could uh, create VMs on uh, on Synology Virtual Machine Manager. Now, how would we go about actually importing virtual machines? Well, actually, as you can see here, this is a, a VMware. So I think this is VMware 6.7 or, uh, yeah, 6.7 um, that we're running here. And we've got this, uh, this virtual machine, so Workshop 001, um, as you can see there on, uh, on the screen. Now, also in that virtual machine, you can see we've got a number of different uh, photos that uh, um, I kind of want to be able to, to migrate over when we move on to uh, Synology Virtual Machine Manager. Now, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to, uh, first off, we're going to power off this virtual machine so it's not making any more changes. We're not going to get any conflicts when we start trying to look at, at the new location. So that's going to shut down for us. What we'll do, we'll jump onto the NAS and we'll choose Active Backup for Business. Now here we've got a, uh, if we go to virtual machine, we've already linked it to our VMware image. And I've got a task here that hopefully if we uh, look at the details, yeah, it's backing up just that virtual machine that we want to migrate. Now what we'll do, we'll uh, select backup. So we've got the most up-to-date version, most up-to-date copy of that VM that we're trying to move over onto, uh, onto the Synology Virtual Machine Manager. And then once that's backed up, we'll just select restore choose our virtual machine and uh, choose instant restore to Synology Virtual Machine Manager. There we go. So all we're just going to do now is just make sure that all of our settings are correct. Make sure we've got enough uh, capacity and uh, both compute and storage wise for everything. And uh, we'll also just give it access to, uh, to my account as well. And again, because I don't like to do any more clicks than I have to, we'll select power on after creation. So all this is going to do now is it's going to uh, import into Virtual Machine Manager and then start turning itself on. So there we go. We can see it's preparing and powering on now. So that's now running. So now if we were to uh, connect into it, we can now see that uh, just as you would uh, with any Windows update, it's going to do a little bit of a refresh. But uh, once that's up and going, um, it will be ready to use. So now that we're signed in, what we can do is uh, just make sure that all of my photos and everything has migrated across. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go and find those photos quickly. So if we go into pictures, now this is a Windows 10 environment. Uh, it's been a little while since I last used it. So uh, there we go. Yep, pictures. 
And when this opens, do, 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 do. get our windows being slow after uh, booting up. And uh, there we go. We can see all of our photos have, uh, have moved across. And if I open them, you can see a little bit more in depth that uh, actually a little bit of a self plug here. This was a trip that I did uh, at the beginning of the year when I went to uh, European Championships uh, down in uh, down in Italy. Um, so yeah, you can see us uh, coming back from uh, Italy there, entering Italy, some boats that we were sailing, and also the view out of uh, out of the apartment that we were staying in. So yeah, we've kind of taken a look at obviously how we can pull onto uh, onto the uh, onto virtual machine manager, and um, we've also taken a look at how we can create virtual machines. Now let's kind of take a look at some of the more kind of really interesting, uh, useful features of uh, of virtual machine manager. Now, obviously, with uh, virtual machine managers we've seen there, we've had a one-node cluster essentially. So, how can we kind of maybe make a bit more kind of use case of, uh, of multiple Synology NASs? Well, actually, what we can do is we can get uh, several DSM or yeah, several uh, Synology NAS systems. We can actually build a, a virtual machine cluster above all of them. Now, this means that uh, actually our uh, virtual machine can uh, sit on top of that. So that means that actually, yeah, if our NAS were to go down for whatever reason, well, actually our virtual machine is uh, going to be protected from that. So this is actually why, this is a, why I kind of wanted to bring up that, uh, that uh, VDSM that we created. So it actually enables us to have Synology operating systems available to us all the time, even if the NAS that it's actually running on isn't necessarily going to be uh, available to us all the time. So... Yeah, let's kind of take a bit of a look at how we can actually create that cluster first. Well, obviously, what we need to do is uh, we need to uh, add some systems to our cluster. But first off, we're actually going to add a license, a sort of Virtual Machine Manager Pro license to our NAS instead. So under license, what we'll do is we'll select add a license, and I'll just sign into uh, my Synology account here. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll just choose my Synology account. And uh, we'll just put in the, uh, the password now. There we go, slow typing. Uh, this is going to sign in for us on, uh, on my Synology account. Mm -hmm. Now, there we go, so we're signed in. And uh, what we could do here is if I want to add a new license, I could add that here. But actually, as you can see in behind, it's already detected the license that uh, is, uh, is linked to my Synology account. Now, from here, what we can do is uh, we can actually start adding systems to our Synology Virtual Machine Manager cluster. So under cluster, what we'll do, uh, we'll just, uh, we'll not click action, sorry. We'll click add. And uh, now we can choose to uh, add some systems by the IP addresses, because I know those uh, off the top of my head. So we'll add the other system, so dot uh, 113, there we go. And we'll also put in our login details for that uh, for that system as well. And as we are using slightly different passwords, we shall not save that password for that NAS on this NAS. So there we go. And uh, we'll click next, just making sure that all of the settings are correct. And now this is going to uh, add that NAS to our virtual machine manager cluster. So there we go. We can now see we've got a two host cluster. And again, I do have a third system that I want to add to this as well. So you don't need to see it all again a second time. But there we go, it's all added uh, now. And uh, yeah, we can now start actually utilizing that highly available setup that, uh, that we wanted to originally. So just before we uh, actually are able to kind of showcase the high availability feature, um, you do have to enable this uh, on a virtual machine basis, on a yeah, virtual machine by virtual machine basis. Um, now this obviously means that you've got kind of a, quite a lot of flexibility when it comes to this. So potentially you might want some virtual machines to be able to move around uh, around systems, whilst others you might want to uh, just have them locked to a single host. Maybe you have uh, some residency obligations where everything has to stay in, uh, in one building, but maybe your virtual machine hosts are uh, actually in several buildings um, and just connected over a, uh, over a network. Then uh, maybe you might not want to uh, enable that HA but um, as we say here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure we've got storage available to everyone all the time. And so we uh, we will select the uh, enable HA option for this. So there we go. So now that's enabled. What we can see here is we've got that virtual storage uh, and it's running on uh, on lab three, which is uh, one of our destination systems, sorry, one of our host systems. 
And um, well, let's kind of take a bit of a look at, uh, yeah, kind of the fail over times and um, how we can kind of, uh, uh, yeah, make make the most of this uh, this feature. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a, a continuous ping to the to that uh, IP address. So 10.20.1.94. And also just make sure this is uh, continuous for us. There we go. So that is now going to start pinging our uh, virtual storage. And uh, what we can do is um, let's just unplug the host that it's running on. So there we go. Nice and easy. Unplugged. We can see that the request is now timed out. And this is now going to uh, yeah, start that uh, failover process onto uh, one of the other systems. So there we go in the background. We can see that it's uh, detected it's got no network connection. And so that will start pulling it onto uh, one of the other NASs in, uh, in the host cluster. And uh, we'll be able to uh, pick up and resume the... Um, uh, from uh, yeah, uh, kind of, yeah, pick up exactly where we left off. So it's just going to keep working. There we go. Now again, I was uh, yeah, it does take a little bit of time to uh, to do this. So um, yeah, talk amongst yourselves whilst uh, whilst it's doing this. Um, but uh, yeah, it is a really kind of cool feature. And again, kind of the the, the reasons why we want, might want to do this, obviously, is you know we can set up snapshot replications. We can have manual kind of setups. But maybe your IT admin is out for the day and they don't have the ability to, uh, I don't know, we had it, for instance, where um, an IT manager um, of one of my end users was um, was out on holiday and then all a, a system went down because they had a power outage in one of their buildings. Well, he didn't have the ability because he didn't have his laptop with him. He couldn't then remote in and start pointing everything to different uh, systems in a different building. So actually uh, having a solution that does this automatically is a, a really kind of cool feature. And um, yeah, means that uh, yeah, you can keep working um, even uh, even though your IT admins aren't monitoring the systems twenty four seven. So there we go, and now we can see that the uh, the ping time has uh, has come back. So it means that that storage is back up and running and uh, is running on uh, on lab one. And uh, I know it's actually saying powering on there, but uh, I think I uh, paused the video too uh, too quickly. Um, but yes, yeah, so that means that our system has uh, taken, uh, yeah, moved from uh, lab three, the host that it was running on, and is now running on uh, on lab one, meaning that um, yeah, we've uh, managed to have that uh, that maximum uptime. So I know we've covered a, a huge number of uh, different kind of uh, aspects of uh, virtual machine manager, and hopefully it's uh, kind of really uh, in uh, piqued your interest in. Um, uh yeah in, in what it can do um for, for maybe your organization um or if you're a uh, maybe a prosumer what you can do at home um but yeah as i say we've taken a look at some of the different aspects obviously we took a look at uh, virtualized infrastructure and how we can move and centralize all of that we've taken a look at the synology option um, and then we've also taken a look at uh, how virtual machine manager can actually be used um to uh, to help assist in uh, in those organizations so all that's left for me to say is uh, thank you very much for listening.